Hey, welcome to Dan's Model Works. And today we are going to be taking a break from all of these wretched containers that I've been painting. Um, you can see I've got a selection here. Um, and they're from the Ravel uh, Colombo Express. I am working on it. I really am. But, as a lot of people said in the comments, um, yeah, painting the containers is the big deal of this kit. So, as you can see, we've got more than just the Hapag Lloyd decals that came with the kit. There we go. So, um, I'm working on these maybe about an hour and a half per day. It's amazing how much time it is sucking up, but anyway... We are persevering. What we're going to be looking at today is a recent acquisition at my local hobby shop. And we have an Emily flying boat. And we're not starting this right now, but I thought this was a nice kit to look at. I have seen these online and have been tempted by them, but I never really pulled the trigger on them. Uh, the actual uh, manufacturer was... Uh, Kawanishi, and it's the H8K. There was a 1 and 2 variation depending on the armament. And the original plane made its first flight, I believe, in January 1941. It entered service in early 1942. And it's pretty much the equivalent of a Sunderland, although probably a little more capable than the Sunderland. So yeah, this was at my local hobby shop, and as you can tell, it's not a brand new kit. It, uh, it's a product of UPC. If you're not familiar with this, that's the Universal Power Master Corporation. Wow, that's a mouthful. It seems a little bit presumptuous, actually. They did not produce any of their own kits. This is one of these companies that... Uh, pretty much reboxed a lot of kits from the Far East, particularly Japan. Um, you know, so they are in no way responsible for the contents of the kit. Although probably the box was their design. This is 172nd scale. If we look at the sides of the box, you can see some of the other kits here. And you can see their logo, Universal Power Master Corporation. Uh, I, I hear that and I think, you know, maybe somebody that built electrical switch gear for a power plant or something. Um, they had some cool kits. If we can scoot over here, we can see that they also had a stagecoach. I'm not sure if that's the, sta the same stagecoach that uh, Lindbergh eventually released as well. And coming around the other side here, we have... Um, Another horse and carriage. And we got a P-51 Mustang. And over here, we have a sailing boat. So I like flying boats. I think they're cool. Um, in the past, I've built a, uh, a Pan Am Pacific Clipper um, in 1144 scale. I've got a walrus, I've got numerous uh, seaplanes and float planes. I do have the Airfix uh, Sunderland. I'd prefer to have the Italeri one, but the one I happen to have in my possession is the Airfix. So that's the one I'm going to end up building. So let's look inside this, this gem here. See what we got back in the late 60s, early 70s as a reboxed kit. So, they did actually bother printing up their own instructions with their logos on them. So, we can just take a quick look at the instruction booklet here. I thought this was going to fold out this way, but it just folds like this. And, of course, this is a pre-owned kit. You can see somebody made a whole pile of notations here in some sort of scrawl. I haven't tried to decipher them yet. You can see you start with the turrets. Oh, and here's the, the sprue maps as well. Total number of parts, 185. That's actually pretty decent for the late 60s, which is probably when this was originally tooled. So you can see 
Once again, there's lots of notations here. Oddly enough, none of the sprues have been removed from the bags, which is kind of interesting. Once again, you can see how it went together. You've got, oh, this is interesting. This shows you what angle you should have the, the flaps set at. That's kind of cool. That's an interesting detail for the time. And, oh. And you can also build it with um, the maintenance platforms flipped down. Um, a lot of flying boats had built in like maintenance stands that could flip down out of the wing. So um, maintenance crews could basically stand on these things and work on the engines while the plane was uh, floating in the water. So once again, yep, you can see lots of notations here. Then you can see the finishing up, and then it has some painting callouts here. And then we have the decal guide, but they don't actually have any numbers or anything like that on there. And then over here, these are obviously some other kits that they had on offer. So let's take a look at these parts. So as I mentioned earlier, all of these are still in the bags, unopened. Can you see? Like that. So I am going to devalue the kit by actually opening up the bags. But for now, we're just going to take a quick look at the, the bags. And this is where you'll see there's um, an interesting extra with this kit. So we've got the fuselages here. And it's a big boy. Look at that. And then... Everything is pretty much still on the sprues. There's only one or two parts that are rattling around loose here. So I was looking at this kit with Natasha, and I was thinking, oh, that's interesting. They, there's two decal sheets. But if we look at this, you can see we have... I'm assuming this is the wing upper surfaces here. And of course we have a decal sheet. Then we have the same decal sheet and the same wing parts. Curious. And then we have this one. I'm hoping this is the underside of the wings. I'm pretty sure it is. So I've got two extra, <laughs> or I've, I've, sorry, I've got, I have an extra set of wing upper surfaces and an extra set of decals. And then here is our transparencies. And there's some string in there, I'm assuming, for putting on the antenna. So that looks pretty good. And then finally, this sprue here, you've got the propellers and the engines. They look pretty good. And there's also a beaching tractor here for pulling it out of the water. It looks like we've got some dudes here as well. So I'm going to open these sprue or these bags up, and so we'll look at it. I know somebody out there is probably screaming, "No, you're losing all the value by opening it up." But you know, if you're not going to build these things, what's the point in having them? So we'll start off by looking at one of the decal sheets here. There we go. Well, that's a good focus here. So you can see they do have labels telling you where they should be going. Front edge of main wing, fuselage, over main wing, under main wing. Now, before I go to use this, these, I will probably um, put some fresh uh, decal film on on it. Basically, like the the micro scale uh, um, decal saving stuff. You know, there's nothing too horrible here. Everything seems to be in register, but you don't have any colors built up on each other. So, then we have one of the engine cowlings here, and it's, I'd say, pretty good for the 1960s. Not amazing, but not terrible. I've seen far, far worse. 
So looking at the sprues in no particular order here, we have the sprue that had the engines and the propellers on them. And the propellers seem to be pretty good. And I think these are the these are the folding engine stands that come out of the wing. And uh, these are obviously two roll radials because there's one engine, two engine, three engine, four. So a little bit of flash on some of the parts. And we've got some, some really big wheels here. And they are probably for the tractor. And I believe it has a complete set of beaching gear as well. This big hook here is probably to put between the tractor and the, uh, the aircraft. And of course we have a torpedo here and some bombs. The machine guns, yeah, yeah, they, they're a little basic. Take a look at the, yeah, the crew isn't spectacular. But let's recall, this is a late 1960s kit. Oh, now we have one of the wings. I don't know if this is mold release. It's kind of sticky. But there's lots of molded in rivets. But they're not too horrible. The interesting thing is, is if you were unsure of where to put the decals, they've made it obvious. <laughs> there's no detail where the decals are supposed to go. Um, I've seen this on... Uh, kits of this vintage before and uh, it's not a huge problem at least they didn't mold a big raised edge where the uh, the decal is supposed is supposed to go I'm pretty sure these are the these are the undersides no this is an underside and this is the top of the wing So that means I actually have an extra wing. I don't know if it's the left or the right, but I have an extra wing. I hope. I'm hoping I don't have like three right wings. <laughs> that could be embarrassing. Well, this one has two tabs for going into the fuselage. Okay, these sprues are different. So I do have a left and a right wing. Good. That's a relief. I did not open the, the extra bag with the, the additional decal in it. Now, here we've got some tail feathers. And we have the outrigger floats. You can see the doors are separate here for the entry doors. I suspect this kit has a number of uh, working parts that you could like if you were really lucky you could maybe get the the doors to open and close or whatever these things are usually best uh, you you pick how you want to pose it and and mount it that way but a lot of Japanese kits of this vintage had a lot of working parts and the final sprue without getting into our extra bonus fuselage well this is part of the planing bottom here. There we go. You can see the, the rivet detail on here. It's not horrible. It's not vastly overdone. I mean, I know in one 70 second scale, you shouldn't be able to see the rivets, but I've seen some kits where, you know, each rivet be like bigger than your fist. These aren't too bad. If you chose to sand these off, you could fairly easily. And finally, let's take a look at this fuselage here. I have no idea how uh, well the pieces go together, but you can see the giant circles on the side, just in case you weren't sure where to put those uh, markings. Um, there's n 
if there is a line here, it's pretty faint. Um, I think when I build it, I will probably gently sand this area just to make sure that there's no actual uh, circle in the texture. But this is a this is a big plane. It's a big boy. As I said at the beginning of the video, I don't know when I'm going to build this one. Um, maybe it will fight its way to the top of my stuff to do list. Maybe it will languish in the pile for years. I don't know. Um, yeah, I know I needed another kit like I need a hole in the head, but it's a disease. But overall, I'm I'm happy with this. This is this is really this is really cool. And I don't mind kits with some limitations. I don't mind building older kits that perhaps require some additional work. By the way, I'm not going to take the clear parts out of their bag. I'm going to leave them in there. It's remarkable that a kit this age did put the transparencies in a bag. So there we have it. UPCs, Universal Power Corporation. Their Emily Flying Boat, otherwise known as the Kawanishi H8K. Um, I'm not sure if this would be the Dash 1 or the Dash 2. There was some difference in armament. I mean, some people don't want to touch old kits. I really enjoy building old kits. I like the challenge. Um, but then, you know, as I said, long-time viewers of the, cha of the channel know that the more difficult the kit, the more I seem to enjoy building it. And if it's an easy kit, then I make it difficult to build. So, thanks for watching, and until next time, just keep on modeling.